Hi guys. So I've been asked to do a, um, a little bit of a video on lunging. Um, I've been specifically asked to do it with the side reins. I don't normally use the side reins on him. I use a lungy bungee. So I will use that at the end as well and show you both. But for the purpose of um, this one, I'm going to show you the side reins. For those of you, I'm sure you've probably seen lots of Otto before, but you might not have met him close up. This is Otto. He looks really impressed to be doing his work today. So yeah, dead easy lunge and equipment. I use the lungy bungee because I'm lazy and it's um, easier to put on than this stuff. But bridle, um, just his normal bridle, usual bit. Um, and I just take the reins off and that is literally just because it's less messy and less chance of anything getting caught up or or any accidents happening. Um, lunge line, various different ways to put on your lunge line. I um, always feed it through his bit on one side over the top of his head. And then if you go around the other side, it's just clipped onto his bit. Various different ways to do it, but I just feel like I've got most control of him. He's not difficult, by the way. You don't need a lot of control. You'll see that in a minute. Um, but I feel like I've got, I've kind of got him both sides then. Um, and then um, for the side reins, we've got a little roller. Excuse it, it's not very clean. To kind of dig it out of storage for you guys. And on it, I've clipped on some side reins again. These come in various different um, formats, really. These have got, I like these ones because they've got holes on, so you can make sure that they're nice and even on each side. Um, some of them. Well, they just they come in various different formats, but these are ours. Um, if you're just starting out with them and they're not used to using them, it's always a good idea. Maybe just put the roller on, give them a good lunge round. A lot of people warm up that way as well, um, either with no side reins or to have them quite loose. Um, I'm going to connect these on to him now. So I've just clipped them up here. See, I told you I haven't used them for very long and they look like they might be. Oh, no, they might be okay. He might be on a fairly short set and he's very used to them though so i'm not too worried for the purpose of showing you this this vlog um if i you know if i start them off he's had a little walk and everything anyway but literally you just clip them onto the bit each side and you see straight away it's going to put his head put him nice down onto the onto the bridle like he would be when you ride him help him use the right muscles when he's working because he is that type of horse that if I didn't, if I lunged him around without these on, he would um, just stick his head up in the air and drop his back. So it's absolutely no use at all for the dressage and the work I want to do. He is a monkey for making out like they are, I'm going to loosen them, um, but he is a monkey for making out like they're so tight that he has to go behind the vertical, um, whether they are or not. But I will loosen these off a little bit. Sorry guys, I'm probably stood right in your way. Um, whenever I loosen one side, I loosen another. There's various reasons you would have one side tighter than the other. Some people, when they're going around, um, have the inside one a little bit tighter, so they create a little bit of inside bend. Swap it over. Do you know if the horse is not so, not so consistent in the rain, they might have a purpose for having one tighter than the other, but I never, mine are always just even just try and keep him as even in the contact as possible. And he hasn't really got a massive issue one side or the other. So that's him dressed and ready to go. I always put brush and boots on him as well. And that is literally just in case he brushes on the way around. You're always on a circle. So it's much more likely that they're going to just, um, do you know, like, like knock their legs or so I always make sure he's got boots on to lunge. So I'll take him for a little whiz round. Um, with these on and you can see how they work and then we'll swap over to the the lungy afterwards and you can see how that works as well um, he's obviously been lunged quite a lot before so I'm going to explain to you how I'm lunging him as I go but obviously he's going to react a bit better than a horse that hasn't um, if you want me to talk you through how I get him to this point please let me know um, but yeah I'll just show you what I do for now and you can um see how it is once they're established in the lungeon so um literally if he wasn't i would send him i would lead him away first you know ask him to walk on but he kn he knows the score so i just get in the middle otto walk on he's dead lazy for the purpose of this video i don't really mind so he's going to have a lovely time so i'm literally going to send him out around me i try and send him on something like about a 15 meter circle 
And the reason for that is I don't want it super tight. I can I will do some tighter circles with them as and when, but um, I don't want it super tight, but I don't want it so big that I can't reach him. Yeah, if he needs a little flick with this whip, I need it. I very rarely touch him with it, to be honest, but if he needs a flick with it, I need to be able to touch him. Okay, so make sure when you're lunging as well, I think probably the first thing to say is, yeah, I'm walking around in, in a fairly big circle here, but try and not move around too much. It's up to them to do the moving and um, not you. <laughs> so I will try and stay on as small a circle as possible in the middle and just feed him out on, like I say, about a 15 metre circle. I am, um, what else was I gonna say? So lunge line goes in this hand nearest to his head lunge whip in the other hand and I always think of it as like a triangle yeah so I'm one point of the triangle his head's another and his tail's another and the reason for that is literally if I'm kind of in the middle of him sort of by just somewhere by his shoulder or maybe by that roller pad I guess is where I stand and that's so I can drive him forward if I need to but I can also step in front of him pretty easily so it just puts me in a good place depending on, on how he reacts to things. So I always give them a nice walk, around, just like you would when you ride them. Um, don't lunge for as long as you ride. I'd only normally lunge for about 20 minutes because they are constantly on a circle. This might go on a bit longer today while I explain this to you, but generally 20 minutes is, is about enough for them. Um, and that's for a pretty fit horse as well. So, you know, if your horse isn't so fit and isn't so used to lunging, don't do it for so long. Um, um, getting him to go forward off my voice and come back off my voice, pretty simple. He is dead lazy, so watch him prove me wrong. But whenever I want him to go up a pace, I'm going to heighten my, like, make my voice higher and I'm going to say his name to get his attention. And so I'll literally just go, Otto, trot. And he's not going to go, clearly. Otto, because he is super lazy. Trot on, good boy. That's it, and it's the same thing in the trot. You can see how them side reins are just keeping his head. He's still, he's still dropping behind the vertical, I promise. They are not too tight, that is just him. He's a little bit better with the bungee for some reason, but it's just what he does. He likes to take all the pressure off his mouth. So I'm just gonna keep sort of pushing him forward in the hope that he drops a little bit more into the side reins and you know stretches his neck a little bit more I'd obviously fiddle around a whole lot more if I wasn't um, explaining it to you guys at the same time what I'm looking for in the trot is this that it's that um, he's that he's tracking up and that he just keeps going forward sorry he's just got to clear his nose so by tracking up in case you don't know what I mean by that in the trot is I'm looking for where his so say his front inside leg well where he leaves a hoof print with his front leg that his back leg falls into that hoof print yeah I hope that makes sense just know that he's forward enough ah, 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 he is so lazy the canter's even worse wait for that he says oh I think my friends might be going past See, so he doesn't have to be so, um, he doesn't have to put himself over bent now. He's got something to look at. Okay, and then the same thing with the canter. Once he's warmed up a little bit more, hopefully he'll show you a little bit better what is, um, oh, look, he's figured out that these are nice and loose now and he can put his head up. It's the other thing I like about the lungy bunges, it stops them getting their head up, which for a horse built like him, really upright in the neck is really helpful. Whereas he still manages to worm these, his way out of these, unless they're fairly tight, which is obviously not always ideal. So again, up the pace, I'm going to heighten my voice up. Probably because I don't normally talk, he's not really responding, but... And say his name, so Otto, canter. So a little flick with the whip, you don't always have to do that, but I knew he wouldn't go. That's the same thing with the canter, we just can encourage him forward. Keep them on that circle. If they do struggle, especially in the canter as you go up the paces and you feel like that circle needs to be a little bit bigger, then rather than let them out, I would just walk on a bigger circle like this 
And that is literally just so I stay the same distance away from him. So I've still got him. I just feel like if you reel them out, I don't even know if he'll go. And he's all the way out there. I suddenly haven't got as much control of where he goes. Or the pace, because look, he's like, yeah, she can't reach me from there. So I think it's always ideal to move around a little bit more yourself if you want to make the circle bigger rather than reel them out. It's just my way. I'm not saying it's the right way, it just works for me. Then down the paces, simple, lower my voice. And I don't use his name this time. So I would just go, hoo-hoo, and trot. Good boy. Always listens to that, like he's always waiting for that one, isn't he? Good boy. And then, hoo-hoo, walk, good boy. Walk on. And then what I'll do quickly is I'll just show you how I change him over onto the other rein. It's pretty simple, but hoo-hoo. And stand. That's a lovely stance. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to come over and I'll come closer and we'll take a look. So I'm going to reel him in. Sorry, I should explain all this to you. I'm just going to reel the, the line in as I come close to him. Good boy. Always give him a little pat, tell him how good he is. And that's just so it doesn't dangle on the floor. Tuck my whip under my arm. Again, so it doesn't, it doesn't dangle. Um, if you want to adjust the side reins at this point, we could do that one. Do you know, like he's definitely warmed up a little bit now. And I've seen that as he was going around, he was, um, well, I started off over bending, but ended up being like, you know, this neck quite stretched out and long. So say I want to get him a little bit rounder. So they've twisted up on the way around as well. You want to make sure you keep them, especially if you've got buckles on it. You want to make sure you keep these buckles to the outside so they don't rub on them as you're working them. Also of these, you know, if they get a bit long and a bit too dangly, you can just, you know, like tie them up or whatever. These aren't too bad on him. Right, super easy to swap them over. All I need to do is unclip this obviously keep hold of your horse if your horse is um, inclined to go somewhere he's not <laughs> and I'm literally just going to swap it around the other side so feed that up through there like I say there's various different ways to do this this is just the way I like the most and then I always clip it on in between the cheek piece and the and the side rein or whatever device you're using and that's him he's literally ready to go off the other way swap your line over and you whip into the other hand and Otto, walk on. Good boy. He's very unenthusiastic about it. Um, there's various different reasons why you would lunge more one way than the other, such as if a horse is weak, weaker one way than the other way, um, if they just are not as settled one way than the other way. Um, with him now, like I said, he's pretty established in his work and with his lunging so I don't tend to work in one way more than the other um so try and keep it fairly even I would if I was doing like 20 minutes I would probably kind of aim for five minutes one rain five minutes another then back to the other but some people would do it 10 minutes one rain it really doesn't matter but just make sure you break it up as evenly as possible if that's what you want to do unless you specifically want to work on one rain more than the other so looking at the walk here, I know this is kind of going off lunging, but these are the things that I'm just looking out for while I'm on the floor instead of on top of him. When I said about tracking up, in the walk, they need that really big over track. And I don't know if you can see that as he's going round, but the little hoof prints that he leaves in the ground with his front feet, his back feet are stepping way over them, you know, landing quite far in front of where he's leaving that hoof print with his front feet. So that's really good. Yeah, he's walking on and that he's um that he's using himself um so this way instead of just doing the same thing we'll just do a couple of transitiony bits um one exercise that i really like to do even when i'm first starting off with them once they're established with knowing what walk trot canter is is doing something like half the circle in walk so like say if we, we'll start from like here this is just to get them a little bit more sharper and listening. So I do like half a circle 
in the walk and then three quarters in the trot. Otto, trot on. Now you can make this a full circle, you know, like blah de blah, but this is about right for him. Woohoo, and walk. Good boy. And then he's going to walk another half a circle. Like I say, you could do um, walk a full circle, trot too, whatever works. Otto, trot on. And good boy. And that is literally just a test that he goes off my aids. Woohoo, and walk. So he's figured out that these side reins still are not quite short enough for him to go on the bridle. <laughs> you can adjust them as and when. You'll see the difference. Otto, trot. Good boy. It's hot today, so he really can't be bothered. So then I could do a similar thing in the canter. This is just one of the many exercises, just nice and simple. So we could, we could trot half a circle round. Then Otto, canter. This is not on your life. He is lazy. And trot. Good boy. Otto, canter. See how he lifts his head because they're still not quite short enough for him. Ooh -hoo. Uh, ooh -hoo. Good boy. And yeah, just like various things like that. Otto, canter. You can do it for as short or as long as you want. I wouldn't keep them cantering too long. Ooh -hoo. Good boy. On the lunge, it's obviously the hardest thing for them to do. I do a couple of laps, you know, a good few laps when I'm warming up. Otto, canter. But after that, just keep it short and sweet. Rot. Good boy. Always make sure you praise them when they do it right. You know, that's the only way they know that they're doing it right. And that's the only thing that's going to make them want to do it for you again next time. Trot on. Good boy. Woohoo. Good boy. Woohoo. And stand. Good lad. And that, that's basically it with the side reins. I'll show you his lungy bungy so you can see how he goes differently on that. And what, how, why, hopefully why I, you'll understand why I use that rather than this. If you've got a horse that's a little bit more downhill built, I think anyway, you know, that's not that he's built uphill, but has a tendency to go with its head on the floor. These might really help. And you can obviously as well, sorry, I should have said at the start, you can change where you put this. So you can have them up quite high, so it's a little bit like you're riding. Or you can drop them down even lower and wrap them around the girth straps, there's nothing shit. That's the type of thing I would do with him, is have them lower, because I want to encourage his head lower, because naturally he wants to put it up, but um, you can do the opposite way round, or if you want it to feel exactly like, you know, the reins would be when you're riding, you can put them further up the top. Um, so yeah, they are super for that. They're very, very adjustable. Um, and you can also use them with a saddle as well. Like when I was first backing him and breaking him to ride, I would put the saddle on him to get him used to the saddle and he'd have the side reins on to get him used to um, a contact on his mouth. So they're super, super good for that. Um, they're nice and consistent, but they've got, I probably should have showed you that as well. Let's bring him over. Come on, Nuts. Let's go and see the camera. He says, oh God, they've got these um, elasticated bits on the side reins so they don't completely fix them, but it only gives them so much, yeah? So it keeps them, you know, it can keep that nice soft contact so it's not too hard on their mouths, but it doesn't um, keep them rigid and forced into place. But yeah, that, that's that. So I'll go and swap over now. Um, I'll take this off and then we'll put the camera back on to show you how I put the lungy bungy on. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so this is my handy doody lungy bungy. Now one thing about lunging with me, again, I'm not telling you this is the right thing to do, but I quite often lunge when I haven't got a lot of time. And the best thing about this, this doesn't take any time <laughs> to put on. Not that the side reins are a terrible lot of trouble. Oh, sorry, he's going to come and say hello to you. Otto, stop it. Good boy. Um, literally, it just goes over their back. There's a little ring and you just pass, pass the other um, side of it through that and then it just goes up between their legs and you just clip this on. See the clips there? to either side a little bit like you would do the side reins. Sorry, I try not to get my head in. Now, 
as you can see, this then puts it between their legs. So this is going to encourage the head down a little bit more. So it really does depend on what you want to work on. Um, the thing I love about this is it's they're super adjustable again, really easily. So you literally just, I just want to be able to show it. It is easier than, than it looks, but I'm just trying to get it so you can see. Literally, this is how you adjust it and make it shorter. So again, like with the side reins, you are, you can have one side longer than the other. It is absolutely no problem. It's also fairly easy to see because of the way it's set up. If he puts his head straight, make sure the head is straight. That is a, quite a common mistake, actually. When you're trying to check if your side reins or your lungy bungee is even, if his head is like this, right, or over the other side, yeah, you're not, <laughs> you can see one's tight, one's loose. So you have, sorry, Otto, I'm throwing your head around. Make sure that their head is, is, is pretty straight, as straight as you can get. And then you can just see, you can see with this because of the buckles, but it's, you can also have a feel, you know, like, and make sure that they're right. So again, fully adjustable. I got him a cob size one of these because he is only like 15 maybe 15 one if he's lucky if he's on a tall day he hasn't got a particularly long neck so it does seem to work quite well for him so now i will take him out sorry i'm gonna to have to just come in front of the camera okay guys so now i've put this on i was trying to follow mum i'll put him out again i'm gonna just swap the change the rain like i said not that i've worked him properly today but i do even though i'm just doing this for demonstration purposes i do want to make sure that i've worked him fairly evenly because um I've got a little bit of OCD and I think if I'm going to come up here and do any work, I should do it right. Okay, so this is all the same, but hopefully you'll see the difference in where this puts his head and his neck. Otto, walk on me. Sorry, I'm not very um, health and safety conscious, am I? Bear with me. Just picking my lunge line up that I nearly stood on. Good boy. Okay, so straight away you can see the difference, yeah? How it just puts his neck down. Now, it's probably worth me pointing out why I like this with him, but um, if you can see it on him, hopefully you can't see it too much because my work is working, but woohoo. What? He's a little bit more freer to go forward in this, as you can see, he's not, he's not so keen to just stop. But if he's got any weak points at all, ah, good boy, it's here right in front of his withers. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but he has a slight dip here and he's not great at using his back. He trails his back end behind. I love this because for the way he's built, because it puts his head down, which makes him work over his top line. Yeah, hopefully you'll see that when I'm when I'm moving him around. But Otto, walk on, babe. Good boy. You see, it just puts him, I don't know, he just looks more relaxed to me as well. And that's how I want him in his work. He's quite, he can be quite a tense and stuffy type of horse. So it is total personal preference. And there's many situations with him that I've used the side reins before. But now I've kind of settled with this because I do think it, it really helps. They are, um, well, your side reins are uh, available almost anywhere to buy and neither are expensive. Do you know they range from from cheap to um well as much as you want to pay really but this particular one here i think cost about 18 pound um if either ebay or amazon i'll find it for, if i can find where i got it from I'll, I'll put you a link in the video um side range you would get from either place or anywhere any of your local um horse shops would do them as well i'm sure side reins definitely if not something if not the same one as this, something very, very similar. So I'm just going to work him round a little bit the same as I did before. Um, so you can just have a look at the difference and how he goes in this. He'll still be lazy, by the way. But <laughs> Otto, trot on. Oi, that's it. Okay, it might be worth doing this again, right? Woohoo! He's just not listening to me. Good boy. So just to show you what I did there. Don't particularly want to wallop him with the whip until it's the last resort. So what I'm going to do is be like, Otto, trot on. And if he doesn't go, I'm going to step towards him. Do you know, like, and chase him with the whip. So he just thinks I'm coming. And that's enough for most horses. Too much even for some, I guess. But he's super lazy. So 
I just, um, good boy. You see, just the way it puts his head, I can probably shorten this again up in a little minute, which I will when I change the rein for you, just to make him drop a little bit more. But I just think, look, it just puts a little bit more swing in his trot and through his body. It just makes him go rounder, but in a soft, softer way. But like I say, that is just his shape. This just benefits his shape and way of going. It is not in any way because this is better than the side reins you know it's just personal preference isn't it good boy good lad and then what what you can also do you could do all sorts all sorts with them on the lunge is you could just i'll just show you a little bit he's not particularly listening today so i'll try but you can also do things like get them to shorten the trot a little bit or just come a little bit slower so i'm just little half halts down down the um, lunge line he's super lazy today sorry folks but these things are also good and again I would just little half halt Ooh, if you need to just a little bit of your voice make the circle a little bit smaller if they don't slow naturally because putting them on a smaller circle will make them slow down sorry he's normally got so much more movement than this he just can't be bothered today <laughs> And then good boy and then just send them forward a little bit more good boy again this is where you could walk around a little bit more make that circle a little bit bigger so they find it easier and then just bring yourself back on a smaller circle little half halt oh he's gonna walk because <laughs> he's that lazy you see and just adapt the pace great to teach them these things from the floor because then when you're on board and you're trying to do it with your legs they've got a little bit more of a clue what you're talking about people use all sorts of different aids for this as well i know like my mom in particular she from a carriage driving background when she wants them to trot on she says the word on i, d I just don't tend to do that with him because i ride him in dressage and i can't use it in my test <laughs> so i just tend to kind of give with the with the lunge line you know like give him the freedom send him on from behind so everything's saying go 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 a little bit like I would when I was on him do you know my legs would send him my hands would be nice and forward and then little half halts when I ride him always mean go slower and then just let the circle come a bit smaller so he naturally slows himself down yeah so just use the circle to help you a little bit yeah there's no point in setting them up to get it wrong you want them to get it right good boy Ot. do the same in the canter it really does the more i do of this when i do it correctly with him when i'm not jabbering all the way through it really does improve the quality of his trot no end from start to finish good boy he's a little bit lazier in the canter but let's have a quick look otto canter oh he's like no we do big trot now Sorry, and then when I do hit him, I get that. So it's the same thing. I would always send him forward first in the canter. No point in me trying to close that up. He's already trying to do that himself, yeah? And then once he's going, kind of like, oh, good boy, little half halt. Settle everything down. But I'm going to have to just keep showing him this whip in the canter because he is lazy bones. And you see, he's still trying to go quite strung out. That's it. So just a uh -uh, little half halt, but I just keep the whip there. And you see how it's just made him lift his front end. I'm looking for him to like shorten his frame a little bit. Yeah, you see? And then, good boy. Send him back out. Yes, yeah, so you can do all sorts of stuff like that. The paces within the paces, which is so great to help you with your um, with your flat work. Just getting them to respond forward and actively. Good boy, hand trot. Good boy. He's like, oh, I'm so tired. And then um, 
what I'll do is I'll just put a pop him on the other end just so we've worked him nice and evenly and I'll shorten up this ooh -hoo, this lungy bungy a bit ooh -hoo. he knows what's coming which is bad isn't it but <laughs> so again I'm going to walk this lunge line into him don't leave it dragging on the floor do you know I'm not I'm not particularly great with the whole health and safety thing I can be a bit gung-ho but stuff like that it's going to cause accidents yeah so it's just not worth it good boy so we just give him a quick quiz round the other way and then at the end again it's total personal preference but what i love about these things as with the side reins though is if you don't want to totally let them off i wouldn't cool him off at the end without anything just stick his head back in the air do you know that's just the way he goes naturally but what i can do is i can just loosen these right off i'll show you for a couple of minutes at the end but just for now, I'm just going to tighten them up a bit again so you can just see the difference, you know, if it goes any differently and why you might want to do that with your horse. Good boy. He is like, oh, literally a couple more minutes. Ots. You can also work on your halts and stuff. Um, I should have said that as well. It's a great thing to get them stopping on the floor when you want them to. Um, Ooh, ooh, he stops better with the side reins and when I'm not talking. Yeah? Ooh, ooh. Just ask them to stand. Now, if they don't, like he's not now because he knows I'm paying no attention to him. Walk on. I'm just going to keep... Um, let me just try and show you. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to shorten the thing and I'm just going to step in front of him a bit. Good boy. And then when I'm ready for him to go again, I'm going to put myself back in the middle. Otto, walk on. So I hope you could see that. It's, it's, it's easier to see if you've got like a baby horse that really doesn't understand, whereas he knows he's just not listening because he's just hearing me droning on and he's not sure when I'm talking to him and when I'm not, I think. But you're ready again. So Otto, woohoo. See, and I'm just going to get in front of his shoulder. Good boy. Because that I'm telling him to stop, yeah, that I'm getting him in his path. And then I can come back to the middle. Otto, walk on. Good boy. And then if I want to drive him forward a little bit more because he's not going forward enough, that's when I could come further back. Yeah, and get the whip behind him. You see, and I've come behind this shoulder now. Good boy. Carefully don't do it too much because you end up doing this thing where you're walking around more than they are and, you know, they end up stood in the middle and you, you do all the work. <laughs> but you can just get behind the shoulder and send them on yeah good boy super duper okay let's do a little bit of trot and canter just so you can see see i haven't tightened them to the point that he's all of a sudden stuck or restricted this is just going to stop him being able to put his head up you know he's going to have to keep his head a little bit lower through the paces so otto trot on good boy he likes to lift his head up instead of going forward he gets a bit like oh if I have to. So this is just going to stop him doing that a little bit. And you can, I, I hope you can already see, because I certainly can, that he's just a little bit more wrapped up. The whole horse is a bit more wrapped up than he was on the other rein. Just by me shortening that contact a little bit and just keeping him driving forward from behind. It's just concertina him a bit, yeah? Gets him really working up over his back. You can see them back muscles working away good boy he's like this is so random mom same thing with the trot though yeah if i want him to walk and he won't ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo, and walk he's just doing it to, to annoy me today just step in front of him yeah as soon as he's done what i ask i'm going to come back behind otto trot on so we just step towards him a little bit there to send him into trot because i thought he's probably not going to go so i'm going to use my body as well as my voice get behind him like we did in the walk tad to send him forward good boy back to the middle to let him settle ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo. in front of him to bring him back to walk i hope that makes sense otto trot good boy and a similar thing with the canter i mean if i step in front of him slightly in the canter he's going to stop so maybe i'll just show you driving him forward <laughs> otto canter that's because he's lazy bones. So again, I can step in. That's it. Don't get too close, especially if your horse is a little bit bucky or kicky. 
good boy and just keep sending him forward he's just looking for a little way see if he can fiddle his way out of this contact now hence he's gone a bit rigid in the neck so just let him cant around and sort himself out Oh, Otto, give it a rest. I'm going to just see if I can shorten that canter a bit because he's just trying to go a bit long and a bit against the lungy bungy. Ah, ah. It's a little bit like what you do when you road them. You know, you just see what reaction you're getting and work to just try and make it better. Good boy. And canter on. Good boy. Yeah. And like I said, he's been super good and we've been going on forever, but come. On. Good lad. Okay. Woohoo. And trot. Good boy. Good boy. That trot's nice and swingy and together now. The canter will come to when I, you know, and I do him like I normally would, but so he's a bit switched off today now. Woohoo! Good boy. And stand. Good lad. So then, yeah, if that was me coming to the end of my session. So it's personal preference, take them off. There is, you know, a lot of people do. There's no harm in it at all, but how easy are they? To just make longer the one thing you have to watch out for just give him a little walk and trot round. i won't bother it's so hot today he doesn't need a canter stretch he can just have a little trot and then a little walk otto trot on just be careful when lengthen them i just want him to be able to go naturally but you see it will get quite loopy now so don't lengthen it so much that they end up standing on it so if their head's on the floor it might be worth <laughs> Um, just keeping them a little bit tighter or taking them off completely because if their head's down on the floor naturally I guess you don't need them to stretch them off I just know if I took these off he'd go up like a giraffe see and he doesn't make them go too saggy because he naturally wants his head up not down but this just allows him to stretch his body out now do you know and like cool off really relax not in that fixed outline See, his head's already coming up. He's like, yay, she's loosening me off. Woohoo. And stand. Good boy. And that's about it. And um, the other thing I was just thinking of when I was lunging around then is I probably should tell you why, how and why I hold the lunge line. So stay there, Otto. Good health and safety. Back in the good old days, we used to wrap it like this in loops so you'll probably find people still do that now even with that let me just put this whip down it'd be easier you have to be careful if i was on this rain like i'm on now sorry Ots, i would want to hold it in this hand because that's the hand i'm going to be using and wrap it around this way so that if anything happens and he pulled you see it's just going to all unravel obviously i guess the safety problem with this is if it's looped around your hands and they pull pretty quick you're going to get caught in it so um i say the newer way but gosh i learned it many years ago now um so the way now that they say to do it is to just loop it one way then the other one way then the other yeah up like that so I always try and tend to finish but it doesn't matter how big them loops are I tend to finish with it that way and actually I quite often again this is just personal preference I like to have it a little bit like how I ride because I just feel like I've got the feel then there's nothing stopping you just holding it like this the point is that when they pull it's not getting tangled yeah so it's something to be really aware of you, you do not want to end up in danger because even lazy horses like him you see when I hit him with the whip um they will go. So it's all safety first, isn't it, Ots? Says, yeah, whatever, whatever. And then taking this off is just as easy as putting it on. Sorry about my health and safety here. Otto can just hold his own lunge line. But you literally just un 
do it and away it comes and it's that easy so that is how I lunge him um, if I've forgotten anything not covered anything properly or there's anything else you want to see or ask about just um, put me a message on yeah just send me a little message and I will um, do my best to come up with an answer I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful and it was what you were looking for thanks very much guys I'll see you soon <laughs>